I try not to be goofy, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Darius Williams, and I'm here with Terika Jemison. Yes. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And today we're going to talk about why HBCUs are important. Okay, Ms. Jemison, when and where were you born? I was born in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. June 5th, 1984. Okay. How did your family get to Texas? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. I know my dad's side. The bulk of them are from Missouri. Okay, Missouri. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about your childhood? It was different. Not too much, but I come from divorced parents. So right. I grew up in a single household with my mom and my mom. My mom was young, and so my grandmother really looked out for me a lot. Right. And then I had to go through that whole custody battle. I want right. you, I want you, so... Right. Like being kind of torn, but it was a pretty good childhood, so I'm glad I had my grandparents around. That's very good. Um, did your parents ever discuss race or racism issues with you? No. I didn't learn about race until I was in, adult, in adulthood. They never uh, raised me to think about color. Right. Um, that's a good thing. So, right. That's good. Um, what interactions did you have with people that wasn't your race? Or how did it feel? <laughs> It was a culture shock. I went to predominantly black schools from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. And my mom was just so hell bent on, she didn't want me to go to a predominantly black school because she felt like I was going to get pregnant. I was going to be having a whole lot of tattoos. I was going right. to have a teeth in my mouth. <laughs> so she was like, I don't want you to go to an all black school and you know Dallas people associate Oak Hill for Dallas and that's where right. I'm from. Right. So she wanted me to go to school in North Dallas which was considered upper white right um and so ninth high school it was a melting pot it was all types of races cultures um nigerians Ethiopians, asians people from russia um of course white individuals hispanics it was just uh, all kind of races okay yes and i did it was fine it right. was fine um it wasn't a problem. At first, it's like, oh, my God, I have classes of white people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought, well, you know, they'll probably look down or think they're superior. But they were really cool. And I don't know how it is today. But when I was in high school, it wasn't that bad. Okay. And they got along. It wasn't, it wasn't any race wars or anything. Right. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what advice, oh, I'm sorry, what notable moment in history six, sticks out the most to you? Mm, I would say two. Can I do two? I have to do one. Okay, then we got to do two. Okay. So the first one is 9-11 because it seems so surreal when it happened. I can remember exactly where I was, what I was doing when it happened. Right. Um, that's one when the planes crashed the towers. The second one is, of course, President Obama becoming the first black president. president. That's from me. I can't think of nothing else and probably think about it after the video. Like, oh, man. Right. <laughs> but those are the only two I can think of. Okay. Um, what advice would you give most people today? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. They have me on video. I can't. Okay. <laughs> What I probably can give advice for people today is to be transparent. Be very transparent. People think that being transparent is a bad thing, but when you're transparent, you see the realness right. in the individual. So it's good to be transparent. Also, it's good to um, watch you associate with. That's another thing I would give advice to. And I say that because when you associate yourself with certain people, you tend to follow them. Right. And I don't want to say like a follow follow them like a follower. Right. But I would say as far as if you are, for instance, after you graduate, you will go to grad school. After you go to grad school, you will you know get your doctorate. Right. If I'm your friend, you push me. Right. Because I don't want to. It's it can be maybe like a competitive nature, but you just. People, some people have a good influence on you, and it can help better your lives right. just through association. Right, just by seeing somebody else, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, um, 
me, I have friends that say, oh, I wish I could have got me a master's. You know, you made me want to go back to school and get a master's. You know? So it's just that kind of thing because I can see the good about it and the bad when you choose to inf be influenced by people who aren't doing so well. Then eventually you're not going to do as well as, as well them. As them. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. Um, and, oh, and one okay. more thing. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, also... Just always have be positive, no matter what situation you're in. Just always be positive. Don't think about the negative out right. of it, because it's life. Life is gonna be filled with negativity, no's, just mistakes. That's life. But in that, you have to think about the positive, because it could always be much worse than the situation really is. Absolutely. So just always be positive and just have that faith and hope that you can get through that thunderstorm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what made you choose Texas Southern University? Well, <laughs> nothing specific, I would say. I had my hopes of going to school in Louisiana. I wanted to go to the Grambling or Southern. Right. After I found out that Tulane and Xavier and Dillard were too expensive, <laughs> I was like, no, not going to them. So those are my other two options. And when it came and I started doing my research, for colleges my senior year, I found out about out-of-state fees versus in-state fees, and it was pretty pricey to go out-of-state. So I decided, well, let me go to a school in Texas. Right. The only, I heard of PV all these years, but I don't know what made me choose TSU. Right. <laughs> now, my dad and uncles did attend TSU, and my dad would tell me stories, but I didn't do it because, the, uh, based upon the stories. Right. But I just applied, and I got accepted. And I said, okay, I'll go to TSU. And I was excited because I did want to go to HBCU. Right. It's nothing wrong with the traditional white schools, but I felt like, well, I had my mixture in high school, going right. to school with people of different races and diversities, cultures, whatever. And I wanted to get back with what I was familiar with. Right. Did you feel welcome at HBCUs? Yes. In the beginning, I did. I mean, I still feel welcome now, but right. it is a more welcoming environment versus you may be with someone of a different race that may not be as welcoming. It can be the same age, have the same background, but do two coming from different backgrounds. Right. It's no fit. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, what did you study? I got my undergrad in kinesiology. And while I was studying kinesiology, I was also an athletic trainer for like six years here. So I worked with the football team, softball team mainly. But of course, we always had to work with other sports as well, right. although we did want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I got my master's in health education, and I got my second master's in human service and consumer sciences, specialty food and nutrition. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, uh, do you think HBCUs are important? Why and why not? Yes. They are very important. We need to have, have something to hold on to, you know, and they created a HBCUs for a purpose, for a reason, because, I mean, I don't know a lot, a lot about history several years ago, but I know that when blacks wanted to go to college, black people said no. They can't get in. So let's start our own thing. And it's very important. I think we need to continue to have HBCUs available because not all of us come from well-rounded areas. And if that's all we know growing up in predominantly black neighborhoods, if there's a predominantly black school to go to, go to that school. Right. Now, I would say going to predominantly black school, I lost that connection with having white associates, white friends, and friends of other um, yes. Yes. So that's the downside of it, though. But it's very important. And then with that, you're around other successful or want to be successful black people. Black people. Yes. Exactly. Versus hearing the negativity about blacks. You're around that's educated, intellectual, <laughs> those who have integrity. Right. So that's really good to be around. That's good. Uh, do you have anything to address regarding like a lot of things like the shootings that's going on on TSU? Because now it's almost like the media makes it sound like Texas Southern is such a bad place to be, and it's really not. It's not, and that's what media is for, to you know drag names through the mud. And it makes it even worse for people who don't do not even know about the school. And so when they hear the news, they automatically think, oh, it's bad. I read when the shootings happened, 
you know, like it, it automatically went on the news website. Right. And bl- hear people who are blog. Now, I don't know if they're bloggers, but make write comments right. after the story. And somebody thought we were a community college. Like, it says Texas State University. Why would they think it's a community college, you know? Or made a comment, well, the school is in the hood. What do you expect? But U of H is across the street. Right across the street. So U of H can be considered in the hood as well. But it, it I don't like how the media make it seem that we're a bad school because we're not. The shooters are unfortunate, but it happens at large universities, Virginia Tech. The was in Northern Oregon University. Um, there have been mass shootings at other prominent universities, but do they get the label associated with that it's a bad school or it's, um, it's thugs that be on the campus? What do they say? That person had a mental illness problem. <laughs> you know? So that's how they, but that's that, I don't know, I, that's how they categorize us. Um, but at the same time, I feel that these young kids that have guns, they think it's cool from listening to music, hanging around with their friends, they probably come from the, the hood, <laughs> you know, and they, they want to go to school, they bring it to school, right? and it's like, we can't talk anymore, we can't um, how, get into an argument and leave it alone. We got to come back and shoot somebody. I right. think that's just the mentality of our race, period. Which, if we can just change our ways, we'll be good. We'll be good. But it's really sad. And now, due to the shootings that have occurred, several in this semester, because it was three in that week, and then it was two before. Right. There's like five, six shootings in one semester. One semester. And now, it causes the sheriff department to get involved. You know, like now we have to have actual sheriffs patrol our campus, and that's not a good thing. And kind of then on the student level, it kind of make it not safe to go to school because you never know. Well, if I'm in a classroom, right, and disagreement occur, are you gonna start shooting in the classrooms or just on the tiger walk? Period. So, Ella, do you have it? Uh, thank you. I'm Darius Williams, and this is Miss Jemison. It was nice. Hope I didn't ramble you. too much. <laughs> Did I ramble? <laughs> Thank you.